Good morning, class. Good morning, Brother Keith. Hi, I'm Keith Moore, and this is Faith School. Faith School is the place where your spirit is fed, your faith grows stronger, and we learn how to be overcomers. And boy, that's uh, winning sure beats losing. Huh? God's will is winning, overcoming. So uh, get your Bible, get something to take some notes with, and come on into the classroom with us. We saved you a seat right here in the front so we can watch you really close and know, know that you're getting it. Let's pray, let's release faith and believe God that we will hear exactly, precisely what He wants us to hear and see. And we're not just uh, learning principles about faith. The spirit of faith is getting in us and on us. And we're learning the Lord's ways and His will. This is big. Father, in Jesus' name, we, uh, we thank You so much for the privilege of knowing You, being in Your family, uh, having the security and confidence of knowing that we're valuable to You and, and loved by You, and, and, and not just being in darkness, but learning who You are and, and learning Your ways and Your will and Your plan. We ask for more of this, and we ask for uh, the enlightenment of our eyes and, and the fullness of understanding in these things. We ask it in Jesus' name for utterance and anointing and ears to hear. Amen. Amen. Go with me, please, to uh, Hebrews, the 10th chapter, and let's continue with our study that we're calling By Faith. In Hebrews 10.35, it says, Cast not away, therefore, your confidence, which has great recompense of reward. As we were saying yesterday, confidence is another word for faith. In fact, you'll, uh, you'll see in, uh, in the 11th chapter, in the first verse, in the King James, it says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. Well, the margin of my Bible says confidence the confidence of things hoped for, the ground or confidence. And so um, he, he says this confidence, which is your faith, it has great recompense of reward. Does it pay to believe God and trust God? It pays big, great recompense. He says you have need of patience that after you've done the will of God, you might receive the promise. Verse 38, the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul will have no pleasure in him. We're not of them who draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. Look down in the 32nd verse. We've gotten this far into our study of Hebrews 11 here. He said, what shall I say more, uh, more say, for the time would fail me to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, David, and Samuel and the prophets, who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, waxed valiant in fight, turned to flight the armies of the aliens. Women received their dead raised to life again. Now we don't want to just read that and, and relegate it to history. Will faith do today what it did then? Yes. So what did they do with faith? Let me, let me use some different words. Uh, through faith, they won battles. Can you still win battles today yes. with your faith? Through faith, they were able to do what was right. So they worked uh, the rightness of God. When you find yourself struggling to do what's right, uh, you can trust God to add to you whatever you need. To overcome that, they, they received promises. They shut the mouth of, of the devourer and they uh, put out fires. They defeated enemies. Are there enemies today against the people of God? Enemies today against you? Well, through trusting and believing God, uh, He can do things that shut people's mouths. <laughs> 
that, that shut things down, that shut down the devourer, that defeat enemies, uh, overcome weakness. Praise God. Uh, even when you feel the weakest, through faith, you can receive strength. And where you were weak, you can, be, you can become so much stronger that instead of that being a weakness in your life, weak area, it's a strong area. Uh, isn't it amazing that when you were a, a poster child for what you don't want to be and do, that God could deliver you and heal you and strengthen you so much that you, come, you become an example to those who are in that situation of how to get out and how to completely change and be victorious. So uh, the big thing is, is you don't throw up your hands and, and, and quit and give up. Go with me back to uh, Judges, and we began to look. We didn't get very far yesterday, but we began to look at um, our next example of faith, which is uh, Gideon. In Judges 6, verse 1, it says, The children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord delivered them into the hand of Midian seven years. And the hand of Midian prevailed against Israel, and because of the Midianites, the children of Israel were made them the dens which are in the mountains and the caves and strongholds. We see this terrible cycle all through the book of Judges that as long as it, it started with Moses and Joshua, as long as Joshua was alive, the people followed God, you know, fairly well. And um, as soon as he died and there was not a godly leader, man, they just backslid the whole nation. They just uh, followed the influences of the ungodly nations around them. And God had warned them about that. He, he specifically in detail told them, don't, uh, don't intermarry with them. Don't get sucked in to worshiping Baal and Ashtaroth. He said, you do, and, and you'll, they'll cause you to forget me. You'll break my commandments. And if you do, all these curses will come into your life. But they did it. And sure enough, their protection was gone. And that's what we see here. When you forsake God, you forfeit his protection. You know, does God owe protection and blessing to people who don't even believe in him or uh, blaspheme his name, people who rebel against him? No, he does not. He does not. And you know, you could get the wrong idea if you're blaspheming God and and rebellious as can be, and disobedient as can be, and he's blessing you? <laughs> well, you could imagine that it's because of what you're doing. You know, I mean, where would the confusion end? And it's not that God, you know, people talk about, well, God punishing, and, and God judging, and well, the, the way it happens is, is that people leave him, and so he leaves them to their self. And man, without him, the fence is down. <laughs> you see what I mean? The gate is open. And when the fence is down and protection is down, the gate is open, here comes the enemy. And what's he going to do? He's going to steal. He's going to kill. He's going to destroy. And ignorant people will rail and blame God. The God, uh, a year ago, they said they didn't even believe in. Now they're blaming for all their problems. But it's not so. If you'll return to God... He's ready to take you back. He's ready to protect you. He's ready to keep you. And so we see that happening. There are a few places that are more clear about this than the book of Judges. You see it happening over and over and over, generation to generation. They rarely went two generations without the whole bunch basically forsaking God. Then they got in the most terrible of messes and problems. Does that sound familiar? <laughs> <Huh>? <laughs> we just got through reading. It pays to believe God and obey God. If you be willing and obedient, what? You'll eat the good of the land. But that's not the whole verse. The rest of the verse says, if you rebel, you'll be devoured. So there's another side of that. If you forsake God, it's not that he's trying to hurt you because he's mad because you left him. He's just leaving you to your own devices. 
You don't want him? Okay. At one point he said here, they came, we'll see that perhaps later, and they, in desperation, they came back to God after forsaking him for decades. And he said, go to your new gods. Let them deliver you. You know, you've been worshiping them and burning incense to them and sacrificing to them for decades now. I want to help you out. Get them to deliver you from this enemy forces. No, there is no other God. I said, there is no other God. It's pitiful how people are spinning wheels and counting beads and chanting ritual prayers to statues and pictures and imaginary things that can never hear a prayer, much less answer a prayer. There is only one living God who hears prayers and answers prayers and actually shows up and does things. There's only one. There's only one. Only one. <laughs> so verse 3, uh, well, look again at verse 2. Because of the Midianites, who were the enemies of God's people, the Israelites had left their cities, had left their villages, and gone into the mountains, into caves and dens to hide. This, you'll see this again in just a moment. And so when Israel had sown, the Midianites came up and the Amalekites and the children of the east, even they came up against them. So we've got multiple enemy forces invading the land. And they encamped against them and destroyed the increase of the earth till you come to Gaza and left no sustenance for Israel, neither sheep nor ox uh, nor ass, for they came up with their cattle in their tents, and they came up as grasshoppers. One translation says, like locusts, for multitude. Uh, for both they and their camels were without number, and they entered into the land to destroy it. And Israel was greatly impoverished because of the Midianites, and the children of Israel cried unto the Lord. It took that for them to turn loose of their idols for a minute and come back to the Lord getting in that kind of desperate case. And um, you, you see the enemy, he is, he's called the devourer. And the enemy, the devil's called the devourer and the destroyer. And you see that so vividly, graphically here. They came in like swarms of locusts. They, everything the Israelites had planted, they took. All their livestock, they took. They took everything from them. So they, because of it, they are greatly, the whole nation is greatly impoverished. They're basically um, near starvation, the whole country. Now this, this is what can happen when you forsake God. Whether it's an individual or a family or a nation. Uh, thank God we still have the freedoms that we have in our country. Amen. Thank God there's still some respect for God because to completely lose it is to completely lose his protection. And we pray for our nation. I know many churches and ministries and Christians all over, that is not for nothing. That is making a difference. It's making a difference. And we, if we, uh, he has our faith and he has our obedience, then uh, we'll have his protection. Uh, we have seen so many ways he has protected us in things that came out that were planned against us that didn't happen. And that's just the ones we know about. But man, if God's protection is really removed, oh dear me, your enemies would descend on you like locusts and devour everything you got and consume and destroy. Do we need God looking out for us every hour of every day? Yes, we do. Well, uh, they cried out to the Lord because of the Midianites. Now, we're going to read in, in later verses here about a great deliverance, a miraculous deliverance. But here's where the miracle began, their repentance. Can you see that? When they cried out to God, that's where the miracle started. If there hadn't have been that, there wouldn't be the rest of this chapter. <laughs> 
right? Because what happened in the rest of the chapter is God's answering their prayer. God responding to their repentance and their faith. The beginning of a miracle in these situations is repentance. It's coming before God, falling down before Him, taking some responsibility for your own actions and misdeeds. And going, you know, one of the first things a lot of times you need to say when you find yourself in a big mess, you need to fall on the floor, put your nose in the carpet and say, God, I should have listened to you. I should have listened to you. I repent. Have mercy on me. Help me. And the great thing about it, he will always, <laughs> always have mercy on you and help you. Um. I think we ought to act on this verse right now. I know we've got a lot of people joining us all over. And you can get in some terrible situations in this life. You can get in just some hellish situations. But one of the first things you need to acknowledge is that God didn't put you there. As long as you're blaming God and blaming everybody else, you're stuck. You get no help. That's being prideful, and God doesn't give grace uh, to the proud. He resists the proud. Oh, but if you'll humble yourself, it'll be the beginning of the rest of the chapter for your life of a great deliverance. So say it out loud, Father God, Father God I, humble myself I humble myself before you. Before you. I, acknowledge I acknowledge you are not the cause, you are not the cause of, my of my problems. It's between me and the, and the enemy, I take responsibility, I take responsibility for, not to for not listening to you. I ask for mercy. I ask for, I ask for help. I ask for, I ask for your grace. I, for your grace. I, believe in you. I believe in you. I look to you. I, to you. I, trust, you. I trust you. Deliver me, Deliver me. Out, of out of these problems. I ask it in Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Praise, Praise God. Praise God. I believe that's the beginning of a miracle in life after life. Tell us what happened. <laughs> Send us the good report here later on. Um, so notice verse 7, when the children of Israel cried to the Lord, verse 8, the Lord sent a prophet. <laughs> Is there a connection between those two? Yes. Oh, absolutely. It's a direct connection. They quit worshiping Baal and Ashtoreth and all that junk. Why? Because they couldn't help them. They tried all that. There was no help in that. And they came back to God. And as soon as they got serious, man, he, he raises up a prophet. And he says, thus says the Lord God of Israel, I brought you up from Egypt. I brought you forth out of the house of bondage. I delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptians, out of the hand of all that oppressed you. I drove them out from before you, gave you their land. I said uh, to you, I am the Lord your God. Fear not the God of the Amorites in whose land you dwell, but you've not obeyed my voice. That is the big problem, not obeying. But if you repent, just like what we just prayed, no matter how bad you've gotten off, we see ver the very next verse, God answers. And the reason he's saying this is not just to reprove them because if you don't get this fixed, even though God does a great miracle, you're going to get into, into problems again if you don't stop doing this. Not only do we need to repent for what we did, we need to stop doing that. Or it's just going to be this cycle over and over again. Get delivered, get some help, begin to get ahead, and then right back down into total chaos and destruction that's not God's will, not God's choice. That's because of people making bad choices. And in verse 11, there came an angel of the Lord which, and sat under an oak which was in Oprah that pertained to Joash and Abiezrite, and his son Gideon threshed wheat by the winepress to hide it from the Midianites. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said to him, The Lord is with you, you mighty man of valor. <laughs> oh, I like that. I like that so much. The, uh, the angel says to Gideon, the Lord is with you, 
you mighty man of valor. Now, did you see the previous verse? Gideon is hiding. <laughs> in, in, what was it, a cave or something? And trying to thresh a little wheat <laughs> to get him a little something to eat. And he's doing it in hiding where nobody can see him. Mighty man of valor? <laughs> it doesn't look like it. And, and as you're laughing, I want you to see this is how God works. The Lord doesn't see as man sees. Man looks on the outward appearance. The Lord looks on the inside, on the heart. And, and not j when we think about that, we tend to think about somebody else. But it applies to how you see yourself as well. Even though you know more about your insides than anybody else's inside, your heart, yet the tendency, especially the more carnal and natural you are, is to look on the outside of yourself and your past. And the problem is, other people may know some of your shortcomings or mistakes. You know all of them. <laughs> you know all your mistakes and shortcomings. And the enemy is the devaluer. He is the demeanor. He is the debaser. That's one of his weapons That's one of, that he uses against people is to bring thoughts and feelings to them about how worthless they are and what failures they are. He does this to everybody. 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 He'll, he'll endeavor to Bring thoughts and feelings to you about how, you know, how dumb you are, how unattractive you are, how, uh, you know, what a mess up you are, uh, over and over again, bringing up to you uh, examples of what he's talking about, <laughs> your mistakes, your failures. But God doesn't look on the outside. He looks on the inside. He knows what he made you to be. He knows what he put inside you. And he knows, and this is what we don't know, he knows what it will develop into 10,000 years from now, 100,000 years from now. He, he sees the end from the beginning. And so when he says to Gideon, you mighty man of valor, he's, he didn't say that with a smirk. You know, kind of an inside joke. Yeah, you're in here hiding in a cave, you mighty man of valor. No. We, reading the rest of the next two or three chapters, he was a mighty man of valor. He acted like it. He didn't know it himself. He didn't see it himself. God saw it. And God called him that when he didn't look like it or feel like it or act like it. Oh, come on, can you see this? Why do we need to study this? Because we're people just like him. We're God's people. And God deals with us the very same way. And one of the greatest things we can do is let God show us who we are in his eyes, who he says we are. He's not pretending. When he says he sees it, believe him. When he says you are, Believe him. It takes faith to believe it when you look in the mirror and you don't see that. Or when you look behind you and you don't see that. It takes faith to say, okay, God, if you say that's what I am, that's what I am. Whether it's Abraham calling himself the father of many nations or here Gideon calling himself a mighty man of valor. And if you let the Lord do that for you, you, you get rid of insecurities. You get rid of wrong uh, identifications and, and wrong self-visualizations. And God can use you to help other people in the same way. When they start talking about their failures and their faults and their whatever, you won't even hear that. The Lord will give you some insight into them. You don't see them all, you know, like he sees them, but give you a little insight into who they are and you'll say it to them and oh man, it can help them. 
They'll, they may look at you and not even believe you when you first tell them. But that's all right. You sowed the seed. And then maybe next time they try to tell you about how weak and, and unable they are, you won't agree with them. You'll tell them, no, you're this. And uh, there have been a few people in my life, uh, spiritual elders and examples, that have done this for me. I will forever be grateful for them. They saw things in me I didn't see in myself. They believed I could do things I didn't, hadn't even thought about doing. And they would call for, for me to do it. And I'm thinking, can I do that? <laughs> and they wouldn't ask me, could you? They'd just say, do it. Yes, you can do it. It's in you. God does this all the time. Not too many people listen. Not too many will receive it and believe it. Uh, the tendency, because of the way this world is, and because of all the negative input, is to be quick to believe bad things about yourself and slow or even refuse to believe good things about yourself. Believing good things about yourself is not pride. Pride is believing lies <laughs> about yourself, believing things that aren't true. But the scripture tells us that we are to acknowledge every good thing that is in us, in Christ Jesus, there's a lot of good things in you. And you may be hiding in the corner, <laughs> trying to sneak a little lunch, <laughs> looking anything uh, except a, a valiant person. But if God says, the Lord is with you, you mighty man of valor, you, you need to not argue with him, you need to go, okay. That's what the Lord says I am. That's what I am. <laughs> if I'm a strong faith, if he says I'm a strong faith person, I'm a strong faith person. If he says I'm the righteousness of God in Christ, I'm the righteousness of God in Christ. If he said I can do all things through Christ, I can do all things through Christ. Come on, somebody say I am. I am. What he says I am. He says I, am. I, have. I have. What he says I have. He says I, have. I can do. I can what he says I can do. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Praise be to God. Well, our time's up again. <laughs> but I know the Lord's helping us. Said out loud, I live by faith. I walk by faith. I overcome the world by faith. I'm strong in faith, giving glory to God. We'll see you next time in Faith School. I've got no Thank you for joining us at Faith School. Class is dismissed for today, but you can watch this and other episodes of Faith School free of charge at faithschool.org. For more information, visit our website or call us at 941-702-7390.